What's up, Steelers fans? A couple thoughts on today's loss to the Colts. Uh, number one, don't call it a trap game. Uh, first of all, that's just disrespectful to the effort that the Colts put into their uh, game plan and execution today. They knew what they had to do. They knew what the Steelers were going to want to do in this game, and that's attack the worst rush defense in the NFL. And they went heavy up front. Uh, the first play of the game, uh, forcing uh, Zach Frazier to step on Justin Fields' foot. All of that was or was not orchestrated. All that was a result of the the heavy pressure that they were applying up front. How they had turned uh, their weakness, they had bolstered their weakness into a strength, and actually they turned that strength against our biggest weakness, which was a beat up uh, offensive, especially that interior offensive line. You had a rookie with Mason McCormick making his first start in the league at left guard. Uh, James Daniels went down early in that game. Spencer Anderson was back out there. I took some heat on Twitter this past week for posting uh, Justin Fields' stats so far this year compared to Kenny Pickett's stats through three games last year. Just to kind of get at the point that if Matt Canada and Kenny Pickett had totaled three offensive touchdowns through three games last year, uh, the entirety of Allegheny County would have burned to the ground. I'm not a Justin Fields hater, and I certainly didn't love Kenny Pickett. I didn't think he was the answer. Uh, I think Fields, after seeing his performance today, I feel more strongly that he has the potential to lead this team where it needs to go. I just didn't think his play coming into today uh, warranted the praise that he was getting, people saying that you can't take him off the field right now. And I say that mostly because I just want to see touchdowns and not field goals. Uh, Chris Boswell's leg's going to be fine, but his back's going to get tired carrying this whole team. At the same time, I think this defense has feasted against some... I don't know if overrated is the term, uh, but some teams that, uh, let's see, Kirk Cousins, uh, there was some talk about, is he washed? Is it time to go to Michael Penix? And then Bo Nix looked completely terrified and overwhelmed in the moment against that Steelers pass rush. And then a hobbled Justin Herbert, who was pulled fairly early from that game as well. I think the defense had been playing over his head. I think the offense had been doing just enough. And uh, moving the ball pretty well between the 20s, the easy out for why today is more an outlier than the true identity of the Steelers team is Dan Moore was their only healthy offensive lineman. How much are you going to do with Dan Moore when Dan Moore is your, your rock, your pillar, your vanguard? He's played fairly well this year, certainly exceeded all expectations. But I don't think this team is going to go anywhere until they get their line healthy. They're able to bully teams with that the two-headed monster attack, Najee and Jalen. And then mixing a little bit of Cordero Patterson uh, once you're bloodied and bruised, uh, you know, make you chase the home run ball. Once they get that ground attack they can really lean on, I think Justin Fields can be good enough for that team, uh, given also the defense, uh, giving you all the advantages of the turnovers, the short fields. I think that's the recipe to winning with Justin Fields. Not asking him to do too much. Don't drop back 55 times a game like Big Ben. We don't need you to create magic with your legs 20 times a game like Kyler Murray. Look at the first three weeks, what uh, Justin Fields was doing. He averaged 25 passing attempts in each of those three wins. That's about perfect what you should ask him, the amount of times you should have the ball in his hands. Just let him distribute, let the big boys go to work, and then burn their asses over the top once they bring extra guys down low because they're sick of you bullying them in the box. As far as the officiating in this game goes, I think that TJ was held on the, the Colts' second touchdown. TJ swam across his face, had him beat clean early in the rep. Uh, the guy grabbed him from behind and took him to the ground from behind. Uh, no flag came out. I thought the defensive pass interference on Joey Porter was the weakest that I've seen in his uh, vaunted career, his long story career of interfering with passes. That was the weakest of all of the flags that he's ever garnered. I don't know what they saw on that play that they were mad at, but Mike Tomlin's going to need some answers before he goes and meets a Joey on that because he's not going to know what to tell him he did wrong. Speaking of Tomlin, I think he should have taken, he should have challenged that Najee third down run. Uh, he should have challenged that spot and certainly not the play that he ended up challenging, that, that catch. People have levied the accusation that this was another Tomlin game as if the reason that they lost is because Unky Mike's pregame speech wasn't passionate enough. No, they had a plan. They they were professionals ready to do a job. The problem is they just ended up playing a different team than the one they game planned for. Like I said earlier, they did a good job of spackling over their weaknesses in this game. And by the time we had weathered the storm and had a chance to adjust, uh, you know, this team just doesn't have a lot of comeback built in them. And, you know, credit where credit's due, they got close. But 
Um, they came up just short, and it's the result at the end of the day that matters. Mike Tomlin would say that he doesn't seek any comfort in the fact that this team got close at the end. They made it close uh, because they're playing football. They're not playing horseshoes or hand grenades out there. You hear a lot of people saying, uh, why does it take till halftime to adjust to a bad coaching plan, to uh, to adjust to what they're showing you and, you know, come out and stop doing, stop banging your head against the wall, start doing things that might actually work. Uh, well, it's hard to communicate with your whole, with your whole unit, your whole offense or your whole defense on the field in game. Uh, if you're down on the sideline, you're dealing with stadium noise. It's hard to get everyone huddled up. And uh, if your guys up in the booth, this is why Ben hated having Matt Candid up in the booth. Um, you can only talk to him through, he can only talk to you on the sideline through the headset. You can't talk back to him unless you get on the sideline and pick up a phone. Uh, the in-helmet communication doesn't have a mic built into it. It's just a receiver. They couldn't have that dialogue of, this is what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? What do you think we should do? Um, it was just, you know, from on high, the word coming in, this is what I do. Well, I guess, you know, I'll do that. Look up at the press box. What the hell did you think was going to happen, jerk? And again, with all the noise, you're just playing a game of telephone. So it's best to just have those conversations unimpeded in the locker room. And, uh, you know, if you try to call in an adjustment and not everyone gets the memo, uh, that could be, that could end up being worse than if you just, you know, try to tread water just to get to halftime. And then you can have those meetings in earnest. So they came out in the second half, they started getting their legs under them, uh, completions of 39 yards to Pickens, 37 yards to Pickens. The first one set up Fields first rushing touchdown. The second one set up the Firemouth touchdown. So Fields is starting to heat up now. But now he's got the ball in his hands, down three points, almost three minutes to go. And these are the situations where if Ben had the ball, we'd, we'd be like, oh yeah, he's going to go win this for us. Just a matter of how he's going to do it, how long it's going to take. But when the chips were down, uh, when the lights were brightest, and that's the moment when the, the best players show up and play their best ball, uh, it's just a mental lapse um, created an early snap. And this one was on fields. He took credit for it after the game. It wasn't on Frazier, so... Uh, anyone hating on Fraser, including myself, owes him an apology. So sorry about that, Zach. Field said that they were going. The signal was on the on his first leg pump. Um, that was the signal that we're ready to roll this thing. So he pumps his leg. The left guard sees it, turns around, gets ready to receive his block. Smacks Zach Fraser in the butt to let him know, okay, we're ready to go. Fraser's like, okay, I'm ready to go. Takes a beat, then snaps that ball. Now, Fields said that somewhere in that intervening time, uh, the defense had started to shift on the back end, and Fields was looking, had taken his eye off the ball to see how they their safeties were adjusting their shells, but he had already set in motion uh, the, the series of events that would culminate in the snap. So the ball came out, he's not looking for it, bounces off his hands, they lose 12 yards, all of a sudden the offense is on the defensive in a crucial situation, they're not able to overcome it. And the game's over. So it's just an unfortunate play. Um, unfortunate because there's nobody to blame. And blame is the first step to healing. So if we can't blame anyone, how are we ever going to heal on this thing? So like I said, I think it's a promising stepping stone for Justin Fields. I think that I don't think everyone's lying to us when they say that it's still Russ's job uh, when he's healthy, when he's back healthy. Um, but I think one more game like this, and he will have a very strong case uh, for that for that number one chair. So I do think that we could be one week away at this point from handing the keys to the kid and then having that veteran quarterback insurance policy in the back pocket. And, uh, you know, that's how winning teams carry themselves.